name is me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the IMDb studio at Acura Festival Village. And look, it's the director and star of The Assistant. Give it up for him, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Kids, you come into Sundance with a movie everybody's talking about. Went to Telluride. That's where you got a bunch of attention and stuff. But you're up here on the mountain with the movie. Uh, that is oddly appropriate for this fe any festival, but for this fe festival particularly. Take us into The Assistant. <laughs> okay, The Assistant is a film starring Julia Garner about a, the youngest woman uh, who is the on the desk, so an assistant to an executive, like a predatory film executive, basically. Mm -hmm. Let's all uh, use our imagination. Who can we summon? Yeah, Got exactly. one. Go. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's not based on anyone, but there was. We did. I did interview a lot of people that worked at the Weinstein Company and at Miramax, so there are a lot of details from there, but I also spoke to people who worked at agencies and studios. And, and did I mean it went beyond... The film world, too? Definitely, yeah. Women in tech, women in engineering. I and mean, everywhere you went, same this, story. Exactly. The same stories were happening over and over again. So Ugh. that's what it's based on. Yeah. Um, when you read the script, uh, is it instantly like, oh my God, I have to carry this entire thing? It's almost like a one person show for the longest stretch of it. At least that's what it seems like <laughs> from the trailer. I mean, uh, yeah, I, of course that's terrifying, but I tend to do that though. Every <laughs> day, I'm like, this is terrifying. I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, but Kitty's so talented, and it was kind. Of, it was no brainer. I mean, I, I've been a fan of hers even before I read the script at casting John Monet. Um, I saw that when it came out on Netflix. So as soon as I saw this, that she was uh, doing this film, and and she wrote a movie, I, I read it, and I was like, oh, this is also amazing. And she's an amazing writer. So it, it wasn't. It wasn't really. It was a no brainer in, in a way. It's something like if you look at something like Ozark, it's you. You're in a bunch, but you get scenes off, and they go deal with other yeah, people. I get a bit of a break. Yeah, you get to like hang out in the trailer, maybe yeah. play a video game. But in looking at this movie, it's like, it's relentless. You're all the way through. Do you, did you even have to speak to somebody like, uh, like, how do I play this role? Or were well, you able I've to pull from like real I've done movies where I've cared, like I've done Electric Children where I've been, but this one especially, it's a lot of me, <laughs> which is like weird to say, <laughs> it's a lot of me. Um, but it was a challenge. I mean, so much, Kitty made it very clear that before we started uh, filming, that it, it's a very, um, it's like a quiet film, but the, the subject is, is very loud in, in a way. So oh, yeah. it, it's a very internal um, film. So that, that was really important in the prep for this. And also I just felt like the, I wanted the audience to be Jane's subconscious, but really like the people around her are not even noticing her, except for the audience, they're, they're knowing what she's feeling. So that was really important. It's almost like, uh, the, the trailer plays like, almost like a horror movie, which largely, I guess, it is. I mean, yeah, I mean, yes. I, I wouldn't call it a horror movie or a thriller or all these kind of words people attach to it. Unsettling, unnerving. Yeah, it's about. There's a lot of tension. It's sort of. It's filled with tension. It's about sort of one woman's day and in a very uncomfortable situation in a very toxic work environment. Mm. So, and it is kind. I guess I didn't want to lean into those tropes. I wasn't trying to sensationalize because it is about such delicate subject matter. Right. You don't want to turn it into like it's a genre thriller yeah. at the end of the day. She's got to kill the guy. Exactly. Right. It would have been very wrong, and I just felt like in order to do this right, um, like we had to really be delicate about the way we approached it. So yeah, while it does have kind of echoes of whatever horror movies, it had those pieces, there's things there that are pretty horrific. Yeah, it's sort of, it is its own thing. I'm gonna not give it a genre. And I think too where I pull the horror element is because at least what I get from the trailer and then people who've seen it have talked to me, do you ever see the, the executive, the, the figure? No. Why, what a like, great choice, why? Uh, well, firstly, bad men have had enough screen time. That's my veneer. Reason number one. That's uh, awesome. Reason number two is we know what happens behind that closed door. Um, like, we've read about it in the news. We know what's going on when he's leading a pretty actress into that room. Right. So what I was trying to get her get at was what's happening around that room. What do the people know who are leading women into that room? What, who knows what? And what's, uh, so it's more about the machinery or the system surrounding a predator. That's ingenious. It also allows you, like, you don't like, oh, there's the bad guy. We don't know the bad guy. This is that bad guy. Mm. You can put anybody in that room, I would imagine, if you're watching the Completely, movie. Completely, yeah. That also makes it more relatable. I mean, I think sometimes people, especially being in the film industry, they were like, oh, it, it, it's, the whole world is not just Hollywood. Right. It's not just, you know, so anybody watching the film is, yes, it takes place in a pro, uh, production office or whatever, but it's 
they can relate to it more if it's not just someone specific in a way. In getting ready for this, uh, I've read that you, you know, you were working on a documentary and then the story, the Me Too story broke and then you were like, I'm going to do this instead and shift it to narrative. Was it, and since it's so close to the headlines, it is rather close to the homework in terms of documentary. Did you see a difference between the two and did you have a preference between the two? I mean, I, st I studied fiction film and then I started working in documentary because I couldn't get work in fiction film. <laughs> right, right, right. So I, I, I never, but my documentaries were never straight documentaries. They were That's always true. sort of hybrid content, like with, with film kind of narrative scenes as well as doc footage. So I didn't really know what the project I was working on was. It was about consent on college campuses. So I was kind of doing a lot of research and I normally just do research regardless of the subject matter. So I don't know, with this one, then the news broke, I shifted focus, I went straight, started interviewing people that I knew that worked at, at different companies that I that had a predatory boss uh, and yeah and I don't know partly I was thinking that a documentary I mean you we've sort of seen we've read a lot about this subject mm. but I really wanted people to like emotionally identify with a character in this subject especially somebody who is has very little power who is sort of at the bottom of the, the kind of hierarchy really mm. so rather than looking at this top down I want to look at it sort of bottom up like how can we get more women into the film industry not just get the top the men out out or at the top so smart yeah I when I saw the trailer uh, the thing that uh, chilled me probably was like my lord it looks like Miramax <laughs> like I've been in that building I've been in that offices and stuff and you know you grow to know people that work there so over the years you would always talk with the assistants because we were young and so we knew all the assistants we didn't hang out with the older people and stuff like that and you would always hear stories, not of, I never heard sexually predatory stories, that kind of stuff people keep to themselves. But there were no end of stories about like, oh, he threw a can of Diet Coke at my head today. Mm. And you remember being like, what, what, like, did you ask him to? Like, you can't do that. And like, well, that's what he does and stuff. And it was so normalized. When you spoke to people, was it a lot of that as well as you know, the sexually predatory stuff? Which did you oh, get the completely. most of? I mean, everything. The film is not just about mis sexual misconduct. It's mm. also just about toxic work cultures, like in work environments that are unsafe and that people that degrade people and strip them of their self-confidence and self-worth. And I think there's a lot of that in our industry, unfortunately, yeah. and all over the every industry, really. So the film is about sort of highlighting it's kind of these little kind of microaggressions and tiny moments that can really affect somebody and what we can do to kind of change things and shift moving forward. How can we make our workplaces safer and more fair and equitable for everybody? Yeah.